Good evening. It's now 6.04 p.m. on March 19th, 2018. It's time to call this regular call meeting of the Board of Trustees of San Felipe Del Rio Consolidated Independent School District to order. Ms. Haynes, would you call roll, please? Yes, sir. Mr. Chavita? Mr. Mesa? Here. Mrs. Martinez Lozano? Here. Mr. Overfeld? Present. Ms. Gonzalez? Here. Mr. Smith? Yes, sir. Thank you, ma'am. We have a quorum. Yes, we do. Let the record show that a quorum of the board members are present and this meeting has been duly called and notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code, Chapter 551. At this time, if you would please stand for opening ceremonies, first with a moment of silence, <clears throat> followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I want to welcome everyone to this board meeting. We've got a lot of recognitions to go through, which is a great thing. We are going to start with the fine arts recognition. Uh, Delroy High School Orchestra performance. You had a, a sampling of it earlier. And we're going to continue with that. Mr. Rios. Good evening, members of the board. President Overfeld and Dr. Rios. And uh, we hope that you enjoyed the, the music that was provided for you uh, at the Right before we started the, the meeting, uh, that, that was under the direction of Mrs. Aura Trevino, who is our orchestra director, and uh, I'll turn it over to her so she can introduce the, the pr next performance. Thank you, Dr. Ries. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'd like to address the piece that we, the students of the high school orchestra play before. They play a piece called Canon by Johann Pachelbel, which is a piece from the uh, Baroque uh, era in music, very, very popular. This is an arrangement by Arthur Efros that they play today. They play this solo uh, during solo and ensemble competition. They got number one. Uh, and now the next piece is called Meditation from Thais. It's for violin and piano by Matzenet, very, very popular music in the repertoire for violin. I must say, um, the soloist who is playing today, her name is Alia Sanchez. She uh, did that uh, piece also for the solo and ensemble competition, and she advanced to uh, state. So she will be representing the school today, I mean, this year, uh, orchestra in Austin on May 26th. Thank you. Very nice. I, I also need to mention Miss um, uh, Jennifer Coward, which is our pianist. She's been doing a very hard work with all of us, with choir and orchestra. Thank you, Miss Quiet.
Thank you for that wonderful performance. I would like to thank again Mrs. Trevino and uh, Ms. Cuella for helping and in instructing these students, the orchestra students, not just orchestra, but Ms. Cuella also helps out with the choir and, uh, and helps in many things. So we hope you enjoyed that, that performance and ex where we have uh, these young kids being able to sh uh, show off their talents. So thank you so much and uh, thank you for your uh, support of the fine arts. Thank you so very much. Next, we have recognition of Estela Rodriguez North Heights Elementary Kindergarten Classroom with 50 consecutive days of perfect attendance. Masida Gomez. <laughs> Dr. Garza. Well, thank you, Mr. Ofeld, Dr. Rios, members of the board. In recognition of uh, perfect attendance for consecutive days, 50 consecutive days, we have the principal here, Mrs. Maite Solis, that's going to make a presentation. Good evening, Dr. Rios, Board President Overfeld, and members of the board. I am very honored and excited to be here today with Ms. Thila Rodriguez's kinder class. We have 19 amazing students on the stage um, this evening. The first thing we want to, of course, say is we want to give a big thanks to our parents, all um, parents, uncles, aunts, grandparents, everybody who has really supported this as a huge initiative for our campus. Um, it cannot be done without them because they are kinder students five and six year olds before you on stage with 54 consecutive days of perfect attendance today. Our students are beyond excited to be here tonight. They just absolutely love the recognition and um, all of the incentives that we have in place. We do have a very brief uh, presentation if um, you would like me to take you through that. I know I don't see it up there. But um, as we think about this uh, presentation and just presenting our kids tonight, I do want to, of course, thank the parents, but more importantly, our district plan of action. Our district plan of action for attendance uh, does include what our district initiative is. And so we are very committed at North Heights to presenting this district initiative. We um, follow the plan of action as stated within our district. And so you'll notice here we have a picture of our perfect attendance trophy. It is finally back home at North Heights Elementary. And our kinder class has definitely helped us earn that trophy. So pictured here in our campus highlights, you will see our kinder class with the trophy. And currently the trophy is in Ms. Rodriguez's class in honor of this class being uh, the special class who recognizes this uh, attendance trophy. Once the uh, trophy clears out of Ms. Rodriguez's class, it will be up on our stage for our entire class because this trophy is a campus-wide um, incentive. Thinking about our district-wide attendance incentive plans, as I mentioned, we follow uh, our district plan of action. And so this is... 
Testing. Okay. And so this is what we follow. 10 days of uh, consecutive perfect attendance, kids get a recess. 20 days a treat, 30 days a lunch social, 40 days a castle bounce, and 50 days they actually got to dunk the principal. It was a lot of fun Friday before spring break. I really was kind of hesitant. And they made sure to tell me that it was on and they were going to reach the dunking day. And sure enough, Tuesday before spring break, they arrived and they called me over and they said, we got you. We cannot wait for Friday. And so we do have a couple of pictures to share for you all. Um, the picture up at the top left corner shows them with their attendance certificates. This past awards assembly, all 19 students were present for an awards for perfect attendance. They had uh, achieved the goal of the fourth six weeks having perfect attendance the entire fourth six weeks as a class. In the bottom left corner, this is their celebration and their pizza treat. They got to eat lunch on stage while all students got to go into the cafeteria and eat at the cafeteria tables. They got to wave at their friends down at the cafeteria while they ate lunch with the principal and their teacher. Um, the picture in the middle shows our district leadership team who really pushes the attendance incentive and, and really helps promote it for us in a very positive way. They visited the classroom and each student left with a San Felipe Del Rio lunch bag along with some goodies and supplies and they were so excited to really be able to see district leaders in our campus honoring them and their perfect attendance. We also have the following pictures on the 50th day, which was the Tuesday before spring break. They received a big 5-0, and they got to hang that outside of their classroom door. Super excited to have reached this milestone. Like we mentioned in the district initiative, the dunking, I'm sorry, the um, castle bounce was at 40 days of perfect attendance. And so the castle bounce pictured here was what they got to spend an entire day as their teacher scheduled them, they got to bounce in the castle bounce as needed throughout the entire day, and they were super excited. The last two pictures, of course, show me super thrilled about being dunked. We could not find a dunking booth in the entire city, but we were able to find a booth that was called a pitch and burst. And although our students pitched super hard, they definitely used their hands to make sure that they got me and Mrs. Hudgens as wet as they could, and they also participated in the fun. So in um, ending our presentation for today, I do want to share with y'all some of their milestones. They did, on two separate occasions, reach 20 consecutive days of perfect attendance, so they actually got to eat pizza on the stage twice uh, this year alone. Like I mentioned before, the fourth six weeks, 100% perfect attendance. They also get popcorn and drinks every Thursday because that is one of our own campus initiatives. For every five consecutive days of perfect attendance, they get a treat in class. And um, they also are found on the Wall of Fame, which is our bulletin board at the Principal's Wall of Fame. And this is the only class who has had all students pictured and featured on that Principal's Wall of Fame. So again, uh, we cannot thank our parents enough. We really appreciate you for all that you do. Our teacher, Mrs. Rodriguez, for being so enthusiastic and energized. And then our students, as you can see, they are so full of energy. I promise if I were to give them the mic, they would talk to y'all about how excited they are about being here. So thank Thank you so much for honoring us and for recognizing us. Ms. Rodriguez's amazing kids, we are so, so proud of you. Tila, make sure you step up to the line a little bit. Listen, Peter, up there. If you are one of the parents, grandparents, aunts, or uncles that made this possible and you're here tonight, I want you to stand up, please, so we can thank you. Yay! Good job. Awesome 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 job. Awesome
Amazing, amazing, amazing job. Good job. Item C, recognition of the Rams varsity basketball team by district champions, area champions, and regional quarterfinalists, Rick Smith and Coach Joe Nieto. President Overfelt, board members, Dr. Rios, it's a pleasure to uh, recognize this group of outstanding men and young women who are also a part of this team. A uh, few of the uh, varsity basketball team accomplishments this year, they had an 8-6 and six district, district record, a 19-16 and 16 overall record. They were the bi-district champions, the area champions, regional quarter finalists, uh, they lost the regional, regional quarterfinal game by one point to our district champion, uh, South Sand, who we had beat earlier in the year also. So uh, one point, and they would have been uh, in four rounds. If you'll hold your applause to the very end, I'm going to announce uh, all the team members. If y'all will just step forward. Uh, Julian Lomas, Luis Pena, Andre, Adrian Zapata, Zapeta, I'm sorry, Daniel Zapeta, Rene Cadero, Diego Rodriguez, Sebastian Sanchez, Raul Rodriguez, who is also number four in his class of almost 700 kids. <laughs> David Martinez, Trey Ayers, Jordan Venegas, Gabriel Esquivel, Michael Vega, Moses Escajeda, Luis Reyes, our head coach, Joe Nieto, assistant head coach, Rudy Elizondo, assistant coaches, Eloy Gloria and Gilbert Ochoa, our managers who are not here, Max Smith and Frank Martinez, our team trainer is Jasmine Hobbs, our three student trainers, Alyssa Aguilar, Alyssa Fernandez, and Andrea Villanueva. Big round of applause. Some of our individual recognition, uh, Julian Lomas was a first team all district selection. If you'll step forward, Julian. Uh, Second team all district selections were Raul, Raul Rodriguez and Moses Escajeda. And we also had two honorable mention all district selections, Luis Pena and Adrian Zapeda. We had three that made the all district academic team, which means they had to have at least a 90% GPA or higher. They were Raul Rodriguez. Moses Escajeda, and Rene Condero. One other huge award was we also had the Coach of the Year, and that was Coach Joe Nieto.
before they take your picture, in just a second, uh, their team motto was work hard, play harder, which they obviously did. If you ever saw these group of young men play basketball, it was relentless from the first second to the last second of the game. Their team philosophy was outwork, out hustle, and out play. Uh, team strengths were they were very committed, coachable, chemistry, and cohesiveness. So uh, congratulations on a great season. Thank you. Please in. Congratulations. Next item, D, recognition of all state football players. Uh, Rick Smith and Frenchie McCray presenting. Let us go with the white line. <clears throat> On the stage is three of our outstanding young men. We're going to include Coach McCray and this young man right? <laughs> in our school. Uh, these two players... Uh, we're recognized as all state football players, which is uh, very difficult to do. It's uh, a recognition throughout the state of Texas. Our first young man is Manny Arguijo. He was a two year starter. Over his season and career, he had 98 solo tackles, 62 assisted tackles, 160 total tackles, three tackles for a loss, two sacks, two fumble recoveries, two pass breakups, and one defensive touchdown. Uh, his postseason honors were, in 2016, he was an honorable mention linebacker. In 2016, he was academic all-district selection. 2017, this past season, he was voted the most outstanding linebacker in the district. Uh, 2017, academic all-district team. Uh, 2017, Padilla Poe, coaches first team all-state linebacker. This is a award voted on by the coaches in the state of Texas. Uh, he is also two, 2017 Texas Sports Writers Association Honorable Mention All-State Linebacker. Manny will be attending Wayland Baptist University in Plainview, Texas on a football scholarship. Congratulations, Manny. Our second player on stage, uh, Brian Beadle, he was also a two-year starter. Some of his uh, stats are 30 solo tackles, 26 assisted tackles, 56 total tackles, two tackles for a loss, four pass breakups, one interception, two fumble recoveries, and something that you do not see very often. If you ever see it again in Del Rio, you're going to be lucky. He ran four kickoffs back this year for a touchdown. Some of his postseason honors, uh, 2016 honorable mention defensive back, 2016 academic all-district team, 2017 academic all-district team, 2017 Padilla Poe coaches second team all-state return man, 2017 Texas Sports Writers Association third team all-state return man, 
Brian will be attending Harding University in Searcy, Arkansas on a football scholarship. Congratulations. And Coach McCray guarantees a district championship in three rounds. <laughs> uh, if y'all look up here, he'll take your picture. Thank you, fellas. NME Recognition of Campus Teacher of the Month for February 2018, Ms. Ide Garcia. Good evening, Mr. Overfeld, Dr. Rios, members of the board. Tonight, we're proud to introduce the February Teacher of the Month for each campus, and I'll turn it over to the principals so they can let us know what sets these teachers apart. Good evening, board members, President Overfelt and Dr. Rios. <laughs> Sorry, Dr. Perez. Just do one second. It is my pleasure to present to you our Teacher of the Month, Mrs. Carmen Sutton. And um, it's just exciting to be able to talk about Mrs. Sutton. Uh, of course, I have a line behind me, so I will make it brief. But she does so many things for our campus. One of them is to get everybody fired up. Uh, it's exciting to be around Ms. Sutton. She does UIL. She teaches speech. She uh, does uh, Mr. Aries. Uh, she, uh, she puts the yearbook together. I mean, I have known Mrs. Sutton as a, as a professional for 15 years, but I've also known Mrs. Sutton when I was a student at the high school. In fact, she published, <laughs> she published a yearbook that I was in. <laughs> and so back in 1989, when I graduated, I bought my, my first yearbook, and it was the most wonderful thing that I still have at home. And guess what? She published it. So it is an honor for me to present Mrs. Sutton as a Teacher of the Month for Del Rio High School. We love her. We're going to miss her because she's already talking retirement. I tell her she looks too young to be doing those things. Um, but to Ms. Sutton, congratulations. And uh, again, we love you, and we will surely miss you whenever you decide to retire. I hope it's not soon. Good evening. Blended Academy's Teacher of the Month is Mr. Daniel Slender. Mr. Slender's professionalism does not go unnoticed. He's the one who arrives early, leaves late, and is rarely out. He also understands that with our student population, building relationships is the key. During passing periods, he stands by, the, by his door talking to students, and most of the time during B lunch, which is his lunch, you can find him playing basketball on the court with the kids. In class, he's, he praises and compliments students and consistently calls home when, when, when they're not in class. Lately, I've seen him show students new ways to interpret and understand uh, what they read and how they take notes from a training he attended called Notice the Notes. He wants his students not only to be successful in the ELC, but also in, in the real world. As part of Team Blended, he understands that to be successful, you must work together and not as, and not as an individual. Because he is so knowledgeable with, with his computers, with computers, he's always willing to share any new discoveries that, that he makes with the, with the rest of the staff. With that said, sir, thank you for being part of Team Blended.
Good evening, Dr. Rios, President Overfeld, members of the board. I'm excited. Today I get to present two teachers. So on behalf of Early College High School and uh, in lieu of uh, Mrs. Rodriguez being absent, I have the honor to present um, to you all Sarah Martinez. Sarah is a four-year veteran with our district. She teaches ELA 1 to our freshman students, and she does an amazing, amazing job. She's a wonderful staff member. Anything that you ask of her, she's more than willing to help with. Uh, and anything that you ask of her, she does well above and beyond 100% each and every single time. It's such a pleasure to present her because I can only, as an administrator, I can admire her and respect her. But as a dad, I can also tell you because she's the, she was English teacher for my oldest daughter. And my oldest daughter just loved her and to this day considers her the best teacher she's ever had. So I present to you Sarah Martinez. A true blessing to our district, and I hope she remains here for many, many years. It's me again. <laughs> so our district, we're so blessed because we have balance. And, and, and I say this with all sincerity and humility. Whereas Sarah had four years of experience and is doing an amazing job, before you right now is Ophelia Hernandez with 37 years of service to our district. Right. Yeah, let me stop right there and, and take that in. 37 years. She's one of my department heads. She's a, a confidant. Again, anything that I ask, she does it and does it well. Uh, and she does so much for us. She is uh, one of our UIL coaches. Uh, she runs a Play-Doh lab for me after school. In the summer, she does math tutorials. But in the month of February, she took six students to a competition in San Antonio. Uh, and let me make sure that I say it correctly. Colores, Voces y Poesia competition. And she took six students, I'm sorry, poesia, I heard correction back there. <laughs> she took six freshman students, um, one came back with a silver medal, and five came back with gold medals. Every student that she took, placed. So we are so blessed to have Ophelia in our district, and I thank her for being with Del Rio Freshman. Thank you. Good evening, board president, superintendent, board members. It is my pleasure to introduce to you the teacher of the month for the month of February. Uh, Ms. Erika Garza has been employed with the school district for six years. Currently, she's a teacher at Del Rio Middle School in the autistic unit. Ms. Garza has a passion for working with special needs students. In the past, she has worked as an ELA co-teacher. The passion she has for teaching is reflected immediately when you step into her classroom. The setup of her classroom is somewhat, somewhat different compared to a regular education classroom. It is set up in a way which makes meeting students' needs easier. Different areas in the room are clearly defined to provide the necessary space for the autistic kids. The workstations are set up with computers and manipulatives that will enhance any lesson. One component that makes her room unique is the student sensory room. This room is the best I have seen so far. The room is designed with a range of stimuli to help students develop and engage their senses. You will see lights, colors, sounds, and sensory soft, soft ob objects that will allow the students to explore and interact without any risk. Students' individual needs are truly met in Mrs. Garza's classroom. In addition to her classroom setup, Ms. Garza has a kind heart. She gets along very well with students, colleagues, and parents. She has the love and patience needed to learn her students' abilities and needs. For such reasons, Ms. Garza deserves to be the Teacher of the Month for Del Rio Middle School. Good evening, Dr. Overfelt, members of the board, Dr. Rios. It is my pleasure to work with Mr. Leva this school year as a partner teaming together on behalf of our students. I marvel at how Mr. Leva can fill the roles of an art teacher and take charge of the yearbook, and I admire how he models being caring and patient so his students can see those qualities in action. I am impressed that he is always ready and yet flexible for what every day might bring. He is truly a wonderful representative of the school district and the people in the teaching profession. He's been doing this for 40 years, and he still does it with a spring in his step, and I don't know how he does it. 
It is my pleasure on behalf of Dr. Zali uh, Zuniga Barrera and myself to, to present him as Teacher of the Month for San Felipe Memorial Middle School. Good evening, President Oberfeld, Dr. Rios, and members of the board. I am proud to present to you our Cardwell February Teacher of the Month, Ms. Monica Gloria. Ms. Gloria has been a teacher for seven years, all devoted to early childhood education. She is the proud mother of one son, Mario Jr., and a daughter, Gigi, and wife to Mario Gloria. To say that Ms. Gloria is a remarkable teacher would be an understatement. Upon entering her classroom, you will see her students engaged at an increased rig rigor because Ms. Gloria sets high expectations for all of her children. When you enter her classroom, it is organized and neat with everything in its place, and she has truly set a positive climate with a warm sense of belonging. You are immediately drawn into her lessons and know that her children are indeed ready for kindergarten. Ms. Gloria also serves as one of our practice-based coaches a new Head Start requirement implemented this August 1st and works with both new teachers and veteran teachers who need additional support in different areas including classroom management, lesson planning, or implementing the necessary Head Start and pre-K requirements. Even at this grade level, you will see students collaborating in Think Pair Share as well as reading and writing their letters and their numbers. Ms. Gloria is a phenomenal teacher, and I invite each and every one of you to come and see her in action. You will truly be amazed at what you will see. Congrat congratulations, Ms. Gloria. You make us so proud. Good evening, President Overfelt, uh, Dr. Rios, and members of the board. It is my pr proud privilege, I'm so excited for this wonderful lady right here, uh, to introduce Yasmin Hernandez, who is our second grade teacher of the month this month. And um, let me talk a little bit about her amazing nature and her nurture. Mrs. Hernandez is a gentle teacher whose passion for bilingual students is unmeasured. She's passionate about using a variety of strategies to empower our students to reach their full potential. She mentors teachers within her grade level, and you see a couple of them sitting over there to support her, so thank you for them coming. And is always willing to support other teachers on campus as well. She's one of our QTEL demonstration teachers and is open to collaborating with others to ensure students and teachers alike learn how to discover learning by combining their personal backgrounds as well as their educational experiences. Mrs. Hernandez is one of our cluster leaders and is a huge supporter of our Buena Vista endeavors. If you ever go into her room, you will find her working with students one-on-one -on -one and in small groups through guided practice. She's never afraid of a task, and when you give her a task, it will always be done with, on time and with the highest of quality. Thank you, Yasmin. Let me get emotional. For always carrying that beautiful smile. Do it. <laughs> she has this amazing smile every time you see her. Uh, with a beautiful smile for offering a huge hug when someone needs it. Often I get them. And for giving so much of yourself to our amazing bilingual students. And I know for a fact that our campus is better because you are such a large part of our team. Thank you for being a true example of doing the right thing when no one is looking and a true example of what leading learning and leaving legacy leaves, means in our schools. Thank you, Yasmin. Good evening, Mr. Overfelt, Dr. Rios, and members of the board. Uh, tonight it is my pleasure to present Mrs. Hortensia Perez as our Lonnie Green Teacher of the Month for February. Mrs. Perez is one of the sweetest people on campus. She is quick with a word of encouragement, a smile, or a pat on the back. She is truly what makes Lonnie Green excellent. Mrs. Perez works tire tirelessly with her students. She celebrates their writing by publishing it on her bulletin board for the whole Lonnie Green world to read. Her students actively participate in class because Mrs. Pettis has created a culture of respect and encouragement with her first graders. 
If you were to look at Ms. Pettis' data, you would see that eight of her 10 students are reading at or above grade level. Did I mention that Ms. Pettis' class is made up entirely of students who have a beginning or intermediate proficiency in English? If you were to ask Ms. Pettis how she is so successful with her students, she will humbly say that she is blessed with amazing students who can do great things. Well, Ms. Pettis, you are correct. Your students do great things because you are their teacher. You are Lonnie Green Excellence. Congratulations. Good evening, President Overfelt, members of the board, and Dr. Rios. I am honored to present Mrs. Sandra Guerra as our February Teacher of the Month for Garfield Elementary. Currently, Mrs. Guerra is teaching fourth grade writing for us at Garfield, and we are truly fortunate to have such a dedicated teacher as this marks her 42nd year in education. <laughs> Early in her career, she taught in San Antonio, Austin, Eagle Pass, Cuero, and Bastrop, ultimately making Del Rio and Garfield Elementary her, her home where she has been for the last 24 years. So I can confidently say that Mrs. Guerra bleeds orange and blue. <laughs> Mrs. Guerra is an exceptional bilingual writing teacher. She truly loves our students and has a passion for education, so much so that a few weeks ago she rescinded her retirement and has decided to stay. <laughs> Needless to say that we both waited anxiously as we received the official word that the retraction of her retirement was approved. I, as others, were elated when she told us that she had changed her mind. And I think it is safe to say that, in part, the decision to stay is because both Mrs. Guerra and I have been extremely motivated as we have witnessed a renewed excitement towards the writing process, the writing initiative, and the collaboration among her colleagues. Furthermore, with her decision to stay and her dedication to education, Mrs. Guerra has given me an even greater purpose and clarity towards our ultimate goal at, of student success. And for that, I am grateful because I truly believe that with her as part of a Garfield family, we will accomplish greatness for our students. She graciously facilitated our campus Foursquare writing training for all our self-contained and writing teachers from kinder to fifth grade over the past few months. And I am looking forward to facilitating, with her guidance, our writing vertical planning meetings as we move into the new year. Mrs. Guerra, thank you on behalf of our students for going the extra mile on a daily basis, for being a great role model for all educators, and for hosting a student teacher this semester. You exemplify what, our, what an educator should be, as you are always professional, courteous, respectful, smiling, willing to help others, and always have a kind word to share. Congratulations. Thank you. Good evening, uh, President Overfeld, Dr. Rios, members of the board. Our Teacher of the Month for the month of February at Lamar is Mrs. Melinda Hernandez. Mrs. Hernandez has been teaching for seven years and is currently a second grade bilingual teacher. She attended QTOL training this summer and has really taken to its methods. She incorporates the strategies to provide support to all of her students, and if you visit her classroom, you will find students very busy working on their writing and speaking skills. Students write daily in, their, in her classroom and are given an opportunity to share their writing orally with their peers. She ensures to provide every opportunity for her students to grow and ensures to challenge them in order to allow for this growth. Not only does Mrs. Hernandez provide for growth in, students, in her students academically, she also pushes for a different kind of growth which can be found if you look right outside her window. Mrs. Hernandez spearheaded the Education Foundation grant in its inception to be able to build a habitat for all of our students to benefit from. She sought input and resources from her colleagues and ensures that the habitat would benefit the entire campus. We invite you to stop by any time to visit and see what great work has been done and what great work will continue to happen. Our students have learned lifelong skills, learning to grow and maintain plants, understand the impact of the seasons on plants, and so much more. Most recently, they began an extension of the habitat with the Lamar Pony Ranger Club. Students who earn the privilege of this club now help as caretakers of the habitat, again teaching our students to be true leaders at Lamar. This is all why Mrs. Hernandez is Lamar's Teacher of the Month for February. Ms. Hernandez is Lamar Pry. Thank you. 
Good evening, Dr. Rios, Board President Overfell, and members of the board. I would like to introduce Mrs. Monica Aguirre Ruiz as North Heights Elementary's Teacher of the Month for February. Mrs. Aguirre Ruiz is on her fourth year of teaching, and she does come from a family of educators. It is amazing to see Mrs. Aguirre Ruiz work so dedicated to teaching and learning. When you enter her room, the attention to detail in providing a learning environment that is warm, welcoming, and focused on student interest is amazing. Her students are confident learners and take on centers, also known as individual or group learning, like true champions. Mind you, she teaches first graders. So picture this, approximately 14 students working independently from the teacher, while those four to five students that need her direct support receive dedicated, targeted instruction. Did I mention she teaches first graders? This doesn't just happen because kids are good all on their own. It happens because Mrs. Aguirre Ruiz is intentional in everything that she does. From her themed classroom design, to student learning bulletin boards, to centers that give students flexibility and room to learn and grow, the site is truly amazing to see. As always, we welcome you to visit North Heights and our amazing teacher of the month, Mrs. Aguirre Ruiz. Thank you for your commitment in leading our chiefs. Good evening, Dr. Rios, Mr. Overfelt, members of the board. Who do you call when you need a positive, upbeat right hand that is always willing to volunteer? I call our CEP coach, Patty Venavides. Coach Benavides is the leader of our specials cluster and an enthusiastic RC skate night volunteer in charge of running also the hospitality committee. She has a responsibility of spearheading athletic nights in support of the Queens and the Rams for our school. Coach Benavides is also has organized and facilitated a PE night uh, for our campus that included parents, grandparents, students, and staff in an evening full of exercise and enjoyment. Because she holds a master's degree in school administration, uh, sometimes she's always willing to support the administrative team when things get a little busy around our campus. She does all this while guiding our students to an active and healthy lifestyle through games, dances, and structured exercises. Patty is an integral part of the RCE family. Real heroes don't wear capes, they coach. Thank you, Patty. Thank you. 
Seventy years old. <laughs> Don't retire <we tell> yet. <laughs> this presentation like belongs to Mr. Item F, recognition of the top 11 teachers using the curriculum dashboard. Ms. Ida Gomez presenting. Good evening, President Overfelt, Dr. Rios, and members of the board. Tonight I have the privilege of recognizing the top 11 teachers who have created lesson plans and uploaded them into our curriculum dashboard. But before that, these teachers are also part of the three top campuses. So I want to give you just a little bit of information and then call up the principals for some recognition. The usage of the curriculum dashboard began in August of 2016. This is only our second year. We began by uploading documents and resources and textbooks, those, those things that the teachers needed. However, during that time, we also started working on developing a lesson plan builder in the curriculum dashboard. This school year, the teachers began writing their lesson plans using the 5E model, and those lessons are now uploaded to be shared with any teacher in the district that teaches the same grade level. So while we have seven elementary campuses, every third grade teacher has access to any lesson plan written by a third grade teacher. And we're very proud of that because we've been wanting to build that support, especially for our new teachers as they begin their careers. Our CNI department is able to track the usage. We're very proud to say that as of March 6th, the curriculum dashboard now holds 8,101 lesson plans that have been created this year. It's a huge number. Now, of those 8,101 lesson plans, three campuses are responsible for 3,990 of them. It's so almost half. So at this time, we would like to recognize those three campuses. We want to, of course, congratulate all the campuses because everybody has participated. And that's just wonderful. We're, we're right on the right path where we want it to be, but the following three campuses have shown an outstanding achievement. At this time in third place, with a total of 1,275 written lesson plans using the 5E model and uploaded into the dashboard is Del Rio High School. Congratulations to Dr. Perez and his team. Thank you, Dr. Perez. The next two are very surprising because I want you to think about the size. In second place, with a whopping 1,312 lesson plans that have been created, is Lamar Elementary. Right. Congratulations to Ms. Maribel Flores and her team. And in first place, not very far ahead, but in first place, with 1,403 lesson plans, we celebrate North Heights Elementary. <laughs> Congratulations to Ms. Solis and her team for an outstanding job. Principals, we thank you for the continued support. All the principals are in the audience. Everybody did contribute, but we do extend a warm and a huge congratulations to those three top campuses. Of course, having said that, you have to have the teachers who actually 
write the lesson plans. Sorry, Ida, can we wait? Um, yes, sir. Three principals take a picture. Oh, and then here we'll they go. Go. there you are. Yes. I apologize for that. Again, 3,990 lesson plans. Thank you. The curriculum dashboard also allows us to identify the top 50 teachers who have written lesson plans to contribute to building the repository. Tonight, we would like to honor the top 11 because number 10 and 11 are tied for 10th place. It is with great honor that we, that we announce that the number one um, writer is from Delroe High School, Mr. J. L. Perez, with 133 lesson plans. He is followed by North Heights Elementary teacher, Jennifer Jost, with 129. Another North Heights teacher with 129 is Julissa Lemus. From Blended Academy, with 127, we have Mr. Daniel Schlender. In fifth place, from Lamar Elementary, with 124 lesson plans, Ms. Alma Cavazos. Another teacher who could not be with us tonight from Del Rio High School in sixth place is Mr. Eloy Garcia with 121 lesson plans. We now recognize Mr. Angel Castillo from Dr. Fermil Calderon with 120 lesson plans. From Garfield Elementary, we have Ms. Isa Duenas with 120 lesson plans. From Lamar Elementary, we have Ms. Laura Martinez with 117 written lesson plans. A third top 11 candidate from North Heights Elementary is Amaris Martinez with 115 lesson plans. And again tied for that 10th place is Catherine Martinez from Lamar Elementary with 115 lesson plans. This is hard work. You, we started over. They had lesson plans already, just not in this format. So all of this work, all of this, they had training, they sit together, they build using the 5E model, and they actually collaborate. This is outstanding. When I saw 8,100, I actually called to verify it because that is just a huge number. So we want to congratulate these outstanding teachers, their team members, and of course their principals on a job well done. Thank you. And because we know that teachers never get lunch, we did provide them with a little lunch bag um, full of goodies. Thank y'all for leading.
Very impressive. Good job. Takes us to five citizens to be heard. No, thank you. And none under six, seven. Takes us to eight attendance and discipline report. Fourth, six weeks. And Dr. Garza. Um, is this? Is it down? Yes. As is customary, it has been sent to the board uh, in advance, but if anyone has any questions for Dr. Garza or any particular slide, he is willing to make that um, answer those questions. Does anyone have a question or comment on anything in attendance or discipline this evening? This was not a typical yes, <laughs> attendance month yeah. with all the threats. With, yeah, with everything that went on. Um, anything anybody wants to ask? No. Okay, thank you. Uh, B facilities and construction update. Um, there we are, Les Hinge. Good evening, President Overfeld, and Dr. Rios, members of the board. For our facilities report tonight. Okay. They're working on the screens there. Uh, so, for our report tonight, we'll be looking at our new construction updates for Laughlin, um, the stadium bleacher project, uh, the surplus portable buildings that we currently have, uh, technology department, monthly service requests. Maintenance Department. Uh, we'll be looking into the Austin campus renovation, campus improvements at Del Rio Middle School, as well as the monthly service request for the Maintenance Department. We've got the, the handout of the presentation, so go ahead and, and go, and then when it comes online, it'll be up here for us to see. Okay, thank you. Uh, Laughlin STEM Magnet School uh, is currently moving right along. We're getting utilities uh, put into the buildings right now. The, all the buildings have been uh, delivered at this point, and concrete is being poured. Uh, set crews have finished on time. Our technology department has started pulling cable as of last week. I believe three of the eight buildings have been completed. Uh, walkways are going in. Um, the, there we go. The uh, uh, ramps will be going in here in the next week or two as well. So once we get those in place, then we will be having that site tour available for board members to come on and take a look at that. Uh, here's a, a picture to the right of some of the buildings that um, have been delivered at this point. Uh, some more close-ups of them. These, I believe, are uh, second and third grade classrooms. This is a photo here of the inside of basically what most of them are looking like, with the exception of the administrative office. So this would just be a, a regular classroom. That's our guys hanging from the ceiling there, working vigorously last week to be able to get all the cabling in place. Um, that, that's all of our networking cable that we need for phones, computers, wireless cameras, different uh, technologies. Um, and that's one of the uh, cabling closets. Those, we'll be having one of those in each one of the buildings out there. Now, keep in mind that we haven't got to the landscaping yet. We will be making this look much more presentable, but I wanted to give you the latest and greatest photos that are available. So this was from this morning. That's the backside of the administrative office. And this is the loading dock that they recently poured the concrete for the cafeteria to be able to offload food. Um, and then on to the, the bleacher project that we have. Um, this obviously was a before photo. Um, this photo here shows the cranes actually removing the old seating that was in place. And cleanup crew taking care of uh, some of the materials that were left behind there. And this is what it looks like today. 
So at this point, all the demo has been completed. We're anticipating uh, schematic drawings from the architect in March, and the cement footings will be installed for the new bleachers scheduled for April uh, with the new bleachers tentatively. Um, as of today, we, we received an update that we're looking sometime in May, early June, but definitely before graduation. So right now there are no delays on that project. Uh, the surplus portable buildings, we've gone through the process of putting together the letter um, that will be going out of the Del Rio News Herald this Sunday. Um, explaining the process, we've, I, we've identified a company that has moved them in the past. Um, so with that, we've, we've already um, been able to seek out someone that can move these portables if, everyone, or if anyone's interested in it. Uh, the process on this would be communicate to the school district. Uh, we can arrange for a site tour to go out and look at them, give over the information on what the expected cost is to move it, and we'll go ahead and prioritize based on those requests coming in. Um, and our final cutoff date on this project, we've set it for uh, May 1st. I feel confident that by May 1st, if we don't have enough takers on these, our next step would be to abate and then demo on site. These are the portables that we currently have out at the warehouse. I believe I showed those last month's meeting. The uh, technology department um, service request for the month, we had 1,026 tickets come in, 946 tickets completed. Um, 30, within 30 days old, 80 tickets, 60 days, none, and 90 days, uh, zero as well. The Austin campus renovation is moving forward. Uh, we're continuing to move some of the trades over in that direction right now. Electricians are at 80%. Painters have moved in about 90% of their equipment from wagon wheel over to the new location. And the HVAC department has moved about 70% with plumbing and carpentry to follow. Uh, technology office currently is being scheduled for June 1st moving. Um, we want to try and clean up what we need to get done yet before school lets out, before we start moving the technology department. But at that point, we'll be moving over and creating an actual district-wide call center for all maintenance issues as well as technology issues. Uh, computer technicians, cabling team, network specialists, and network admins will all be housed out of Austin campus as well. Uh, the data center that's located out in Annex 1 will remain in place. That's more of a permanent structure, and it would be very costly to move it at this point. Uh, campus improvements, Del Rio Middle School, we're continuing to work on the playground. Um, the fence at this point has been installed. That's the picture over there on the right. Uh, this is all being done in-house with our maintenance team. And as of today, I received photos that the fence is in place now and some of that equipment is being installed. Uh, fall material will be coming real soon behind this shed and then we'll be finishing it off with a fresh coat of paint from our in-house painting team. Uh, the maintenance department tickets, uh, over the last 30 days, we've had 377 requests come in. 203 of those tickets have been completed. Um, within the last 30 days, we have 174 tickets, and 60-day-old tickets would be three, and 90-day-old tickets would be eight. Some of these numbers are due to uh, staff turnover. We've had some uh, people retire in maintenance, and we do have some vacancies that we're working aggressively to get filled at this time. Uh, primarily plumbers is where we're seeing a, a real hard time as far as being able to fill that as well as the amount of tickets that are coming in. Are there any questions? Yes, I know we'll have um, several. Um, Ms. martinez Lasano. and maintenance department. Of the technology department, first of all, I want to say thank you for closing out a, I'm sorry. a lot of those old ones. I said for the technology yes. department, your service requests. The tickets, Thank yes. you for closing out 
some of those old ones. Um, you still have 80 that are within 30 days. That doesn't sound like a lot. But do you have any idea how many of those are actually affecting the classroom? I'm sure in one way or another, some of those tickets are impacting that, but some of those tickets could be, um, they're made up of new equipment requests. Maybe they want to adopt more technology into the classrooms. Um, those 80 tickets though, the technology department currently staffs 17 people. So when they're used to doing a minimum of 10 tickets a day, that, that number, it, it's constantly changing. Um, but since I have started reporting this, I'm watching very closely on the 60 and 90 day because we have some type of breakdown at that point if those tickets are getting that old based on the number of staff we have. But congratulations on decreasing that number by so, a significant thank you. amount. I appreciate that and I'm sure the teachers do too. Um, this, the second thing on the maintenance, are any of those pending items safety issues? We received the safety and security audits at the beginning of the school year and towards the end of the school year. So tickets are created with those. I, I have not been able to identify any of these tickets at this point that are safety related. Can you somehow prioritize those? And, um, and I that's imagine we would all be in agreement. Yes, that's that exactly what we're first. doing right now. Is since I've um, put this accountability piece back on the two departments, we're constantly going through and creating filters to try and identify okay. so then we can group those together and we're working on a plan right now to be able to address those safety and security issues. Right now it's it's not as efficient but we're getting those directly through email. So between myself and my construction manager we're addressing those at a much faster pace. Um, the majority of these tickets though, the last I looked I think we were almost 100 tickets behind on the plumbing trade and it, it's been they start working on the daily tickets and then an emergency pipe breaks so then it puts them behind schedule right. so again we're we're watching these daily and they're they're just fluctuating pretty good and from the staffing perspective you said you have uh, staffing on the maintenance we have around 30 people and some of those individuals um, we've identified areas of opportunity where we can improve by providing some training. Obviously, we've been looking at the ESCO project to help with finances and different, you know, areas like that. Um, but it, it's getting better. I've, I've seen a difference since we've been working through this, but it, it's just a slow process at this point. Okay, thank you. And then the last question was regarding the bleachers. You said something about we're going to have a schematic design in April and then to start the work in May. Did I understand that correctly? It's, no, I'm sorry. I, maybe, maybe I wasn't clear. I'm sorry. Uh, we will have our preliminary schematic design in March and yes. then we will start having the conversations of what the concession stand would look like over there, the restrooms, how those storage buildings would be laid out. So we have a lot of conversation to have on that, but our, our main focus right now has been demoing out the bleachers and getting the new ones ready for graduation. And um, you're pretty confident that they'll be ready. Yes, I am. Great, thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Mesa, um, in regard to the portable buildings, we initially had talked about offering those uh, portables to one group and then if they weren't any takers, we go into a second group and then possibly a third. Is there a timeline? Uh, well, well, I'll answer that, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. We, we're going to open it up to everybody, but our priority is going to be in that order. Uh, if if uh, enough people from the private sector ask for the portables, but an equal amount from the public sector, whether it be the city, the county, or even the those other schools, they would get first dibs. So we're prioritizing, but we're not saying the first group asks, then the second group. We want to get rid of them as early as possible. That's why we'll have one deadline. But within ourselves, we'll publish the list of who asked, and we'll give priority as we indicated in the previous meeting. Okay. Yeah. That would be my intention that, you know, we have some educational institutions, whether they be 
private um, schools or even charters that we give some priority for students? Yes, sir, we will. As much as possible. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Just to go back to law, um, the bleachers, five uh, one, uh, and I know the company agreed to a penalty for every day, but uh, we want to make sure we stay on them because that, that thing's got to be up by by graduation. And just to, to go back and clarify on the schematic, um, bleachers up, and then over the next several months, we'll be worrying about what the restrooms and the concessions going to look like, right? That, that's correct. Um, once we have those designs, then we can start having those conversations. Right now, I believe the project is around 370000 and we budgeted 700000 Okay. Good deal. And on, on Laughlin, I got to go out there before spring break. Uh, Mr. Ralso took me out there, and it's looking good. I'll be excited to see it when it's all finished and, and done and, and landscaped. <laughs> <laughs> good deal. Thank you, sir. Unless there's any other questions. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. That takes us to nine consent agenda. On the consent agenda, there is a request for administration to table item H2. So we will be, uh, I'll be taking a motion to table that here in a, a moment. But before we do that, is there any other item that any board member has a question on prior to calling for approval of the consent agenda? Administration has requested the H2 be tabled until the next regular scheduled board meeting. H2 is consideration to approve the second reading of local policy update affecting policy EIC local. And I so move to table. Is there a second? I'll second. Ms. Martinez Lozano, uh, any discussion in favor of tabling until the next regular scheduled meeting? All in favor? Opposed? Um, I'm sorry. In, in I, was, I was late reading. Okay. <laughs> uh, unanimous. Um, any other questions on consent? Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda as amended with H2 tabled? Ms. Lozano, seconded by Ms. Haynes. Thank you. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. It's now 726. Oh, I'm sorry. Donations. Ms. Haynes. Yes, sir. Um, Chick-fil-A, $17.69 to the Blended Academy. Maxi Energy Company, $1,000 to Winna Vista Elementary. The Spot and Pro Shop, $180 to Winna Vista Elementary. Stuco. Simon Benavides, $200, Darrow High School. CTE Auto, Auto Mechanics. Brown Plaza Association, $250, Darrow High School CTE Building trades a and g electric company one thousand dollars Darrow high school cte metal trades texas athletic productions one thousand eight hundred seventy five dollars Darrow high school athletics department a and e kids foundation one thousand seven hundred dollars Darrow middle school robotics club the spot and pro shop one hundred eighty nine dollars dr fenmin calderon elementary stuco the spot and pro shop one hundred twenty dollars garfield elementary Chick-fil-A, $182.99, North Heights Elementary Stucco. The Spot and Pro Shop, $220, North Heights Elementary Stucco. The Spot and Pro Shop, $153, Ruben Chavita Elementary. The Spot and Pro Shop, $260, San Felipe Memorial Middle School Robotics Club. Cheer Booster Club, that water, sodas, and chips in the estimated value of $20. Del Rio Freshman School Sapphires. City Church of Del Rio, 250 containers of groceries in the estimated value of $1,700. Dr. Fenmin Calderon Elementary, Brianna's Blessings. Richard Nolan, one ticket and tumbler in the estimated value of $150, Early College High School. The First United Methodist Church, 90 bags of food in the estimated value of $800, Garfield Elementary. Valverde Regional Medical Center, 75 cold packs in the estimated value of $200, Irene C. Cardwell Elementary. Board of Federal Credit Union, 10 coats in the estimated value of $150, Lamar Elementary. Central Church of Christ, 
100 bags of groceries in the estimated value of $1,835.50, Lamar Elementary. City Church of Del Rio, 60 pairs of shoes in the estimated value of $900, Lamar Elementary. Ross King, 100 popsicles in the estimated value of $100, Lamar Elementary. Amistad Snacks, one case of hot Cheetos in the estimated value of $46.50, North Heights Elementary, first grade. Thank you for all your donations. Thank you. It's now 7.29 p.m. That takes us into 10 administration, A, Election of Education Service Center, Region 15 Board of Directors, myself presenting uh, in your packet that was delivered back before spring break. It had the uh, cover sheet and CVs for the individuals seeking election to the Board of Directors, and these are three-year terms. Um, and just to refresh off of the cover sheet there. Per state board guidelines, you're requested to make the voting procedure part of your local board agenda, which we are doing this evening. At a board meeting, an item on the local board agenda shall call for voting to occur. The ballots are enclosed. I'm going to pass those out to the members of the board who are here this evening. And the background information was placed in your binder. Each board member shall cast one vote for each place position listed. And ballots will be collected placed in an envelope and mailed to the chairperson of the ESC Region 15 Board of Directors by April 5th. No count or tabulations are necessary. So there are three places on there. If you would take uh, two minutes and fill that out, and then I'll collect them and we will move on to the next item. Principals, while they take time to vote, thank you for your presence. You're uh, welcome to stay, but free to go home. Thank you. Ten B consideration to approve the first reading of TASB policy update one one zero affecting policy B B B local. Mr. Hernandez. Good evening, Mr. Overfelt, Dr. Rios, and members of the board. This evening, I'm presenting a first reading of policy update one ten affecting policy B B B local. Update 110 focuses on updating and reorganizing several, several policies in the BB series of the policy manual addressing board member eligibility and qualifications, elections, and vacancies and removal from office. As reflected in the revised policy, election information is now located at BBB local rather than in the legal policies. This local policy is based on the district's election information and includes the district selection decisions is allowed by law, including the number of board members, the length of the board member terms, election schedule, the general election date for the district, and the methods of election and voting. And so this policy basically is the change from being from the lo uh, legal policy to now the local policy. Do you have any questions for me? I have one on page one of one there the last thing that was added method of voting plurality um, to be elected to a public office candidate must receive a plurality of votes i.e. more votes than any other candidate except otherwise provided by law according to election code 2.001 um, is this plurality per place or overall since all of the board here is at large and we know that the hospital does hospital district does a plurality whoever the top two get the 
to at large seats. This is this is by place, and yeah. so it's not the whole group, but it is by place. And the language that we used, we actually pulled from the legal policy okay. so that there was clarification. Right. Um, it probably needs to have a, um, needs to be a, a tad bit clearer on that in there because of the fact that you have three governmental institutions that have at large, and one of those does plurality for, um, like I said, the top two vote getters get the two, and ours probably needs to be spelled out per place in there. That, that's just a recommendation. Dr. Rios? The policy committee met, and uh, that language was identified by board member Martinez Lozano. There's a list of items that we're visiting with TASB this week, and, and that's one of them, because that did come up. But thank you for your okay. concern. Okay, and, and I apologize, I wasn't there for that one because of, of not feeling well, so um, I would have voiced it down. We will bring it back and take a look at it, sir. <laughs> awesome, thank you. Any other questions? Recommendation? Oh, I'm sorry. Recommendation is reviewed by Oh. We said we were gonna do the first reading, and then by the second reading, we'd have it uh, clarified. Okay, recommendation? Yes, sir. It is the recommendation of the administration that the Board of Trustees approve the first reading of TASB Policy Update 110, affecting policy BBB local, and the revisions to the language in this policy as re recommended by the San Felipe Del Rio CISD Board Policy Review Committee. Thank you. We've heard the recommendation. Is there a motion to approve? Ms. Gonzalez, seconded by Mr. Chavita. Any other discussion? All in favor? Unanimous, thank you. Thank you. Item C, consideration to approve first reading of localized policy affecting policy DC local. Ms. Hernandez. Yes, sir. This policy is a localized policy update based on the need to fill vacancies for teaching positions and facilitate the recruitment of eligible candidates. Administration has recommended amending DC local to reflect the practice of the board to retain final authority for employment of contractual personnel. However, delegating to the superintendent the authority to employ classroom teachers to fill existing vacancies. The policy will also add that the superintendent shall inform the board of any persons hired under his authority. Okay, and again, because I wasn't there, I'll ask. This means that, and while the board retains final authority, that if, like we had our, I'm guessing, the, the hiring seminar thing we did, or the job fair we did here, that if we had someone who came in and was qualified, that would allow you to hire right then and there? Is that what this is going to do? Yes, sir, but more importantly, when we go to job fairs in San Antonio, okay. uh, other districts have... Uh, the authority to have the superintendent hire just for teaching positions so that we don't lose candidates and we can very quickly secure them. We're not talking about any administrative job or any other job, specifically teachers. Okay. Any other questions on this item, Mr. Massa? Yeah. I, I read the, um, the policy change word by word and this would be only for existing vacancies, which we always start with those critical areas, science, math, bilingual. I don't have any problem with it as long as it's certified personnel. And I, I say that because again, I would want the best possible candidate, not necessarily to fill a vacancy, you know, with a person in there, but with the best qualified teacher applicant. And um, that's my concern there, that we find certified, possibly standard certified applicants. And by that I mean they've gone through the student teaching, they've completed their examinations. I don't want to start with you know, one of those alternate certifications that perhaps will not end up finishing you know, within the expected three year span. But to find the most qualified candidate that is certified. 
Just for yes. clarification. I'm sorry, Ms. Lozano. Okay. Just for clarification, so that we can uh, have that discussion and use the appropriate language. Uh, it's the, the point made is that the superintendent can hire people so as long as they're 100% qualified, not emergency uh, certified, not uh, probationary certified, fully fledged certified candidates. Uh, everybody else, if I have to hire somebody with an alternative certification, I would bring those to the board. Is, is that the, the, the point, Mr. Mesa? Yes, I, I just yeah. want the best possible candidate. Sure. It's not, I don't want to say an urgency to fill a spot. I want the best qualified applicant out there. Okay, we'll, we'll definitely bring that uh, for the second reading to the policy review committee okay. and uh, proceed accordingly. Okay. Great. Well, let me just add, I mean, of course we want the best qualified person, but if you look at the first paragraph in this policy and under personnel duties, it already states the superintendent shall define the qualifications, duties, and responsibilities of all positions. So we, in essence, have already given him the authority to define the qualifications. So do we have to revisit that as well, is my question. Because, I mean, that's a good point. Yeah, because it's not clear on there. See, in the past, I, I think we've rushed to fill a vacancy with a person, and that's not the best situation ever. We want the best qualified applicant. And so there's a big difference. So we can bring those suggestions and look at that at the next policy um, policy meeting in there and, and I invite any other board member if they can make it uh, to, to that when we when we post it by all means that way um, you can hear it also and, and, and provide input mm -hmm. okay. any other questions on that one uh, the recommendation for first reading yes sir it is the recommendation of the administration that the Board of Trustees approve the first reading of DC local and the revisions to the language in this policy as recommended by the San Felipe del Rio CISD Board Policy Review Committee. Heard the recommendation. I so move. Is there a second? Ms. Martinez Lozano, any other discussion? All in favor? <clears throat> Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. 11. A, oh, I'm sorry, yes ma'am. No, I just wanted to make a comment. Um, if in the future on the agenda, if we could actually just list the title, just for transparency purposes, if people might be interested in that policy, instead of just naming it by its So DC, yep. et cetera, okay. Right. Sure, Thank I, you. Can, I can include that. Perfect. Thank, Thank you. you. I just noticed that. Okay. Thank you. 11A, Curriculum and Instruction, consideration to approve the 2018-19 amended memorandum of understanding of the Board of Trustees of San Felipe Del Rio CISD and Southwest Texas Junior College in regards to the early college high school, Dr. Garza. Thank you, Mr. Ofeld, Dr. Rios, members of the board. We did approve this earlier, I think it was last month, uh, when we met with Dr. Davis, Den Denise Davis from TEA our TEA representative that's in charge of early college high school, she wanted to see if we could make certain changes in the MOU. And one of them is just a wording, um, different wording that's on page uh, three. Instead of it being called steering committee, she requested to see if it could be called leadership team. And then the following change, the next change was on page five she wanted to make sure that it was more specific on the TSI that the freshmen and the school district and the Southwest Texas Junior College understand is extremely important for students to take the TSI in order for them to take courses. So she wanted to make sure that she would refer it to chapter B, chapter 39, and specify exactly what we're doing. And those are the two changes. Okay, I have one, one quick question. On the TSI, and there, since it's asking for it to become a, an official TSI assessment testing site there, would that mean the junior college now during, because throughout the course of the year they have different TSI dates, Yes, sir. could they go in and say 
because we have an understanding with them that instead of the students from Delroy having to travel to Uvalde to take the TSI or something like that, that it could be taken on our property now. You're talking about Delroy High School students? No, or anyone enrolling into the junior college because it's an official TSI site right. now. Could the junior college come to us and say, we've got 100 incoming right. um, freshman college students, we'd like to TSI them mm -hmm. there at the ECHS in May or June. Right. I need to answer it this way, sir. It does take a cost for every TSI test that we take because we, we buy certain license and mm -hmm. they're specifically for high school students. So at this time, I wouldn't be able to say yes to that, to that question. Okay, maybe something just to look into. They're down the, down the line. Because it could be something they could come in and say, well, we've got a testing facility now in Del Rio instead of them having to travel all the way to Uvalde. Uh, we'll work with the junior college where we can, so as long as it's not a uh, financial burden on our- On the district. On the district. Okay, Ms. Lozano? I, I was thinking the same thing. Okay. Is that gonna add any additional work Thus, additional resources. No, um, ma'am. We already have. I mean, and the whole thing would be to support our students, correct? I mean, that's kind yes, of the focus. Yes, ma'am. That's exactly it. But if there are opportunities to partner with others, then of course that would have to be developed, like Josh suggested. Yes. Yes, ma'am. We will, we will work on it. Okay. Yes, ma'am. And then the leader, the. The actual leadership team is that defined anywhere? Yes, ma'am. It is defined in the bl blueprints that the state requires or has for us, and that we have to follow. And that's defined as the leadership team. In that oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Document the, the people that are involved in the leadership team. Is that what you're asking? Right. Well, yes. It is specified exactly who are the members in that team. It's the principal of the Early College High School, several representatives from the Southwest Junior College, and several representatives from the district. So it's just a matter of semantics. Basically. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> just to have the same wording. Thank you. Any other questions, Mr. Ramessa? So, Dr. Rios, I mean, uh, Dr. Garza, it's only the highlighted page three and five. Yes, correct? sir. No others? No other changes. Okay. Recommendation, sir. It is a recommendation of the administration that the Board of Trustees approve the amended memorandum of understanding between San Felipe del Rio CISD and Southwest Texas Junior College in regards to early college high school as presented and pay tuition invoice over $25,000 when due. For the recommendation, is there a motion to accept? Ms. Martinez Lozano, seconded by Mr. Chavita. Any other discussion? All in favor? Unanimous, thank you. B, consideration to approve applying for a district wide low attendance waiver for Friday, March 2nd, 2018. Dr. Garza. Yes, sir, thank you. Um, Reno, can, can you turn on the screen, please? I'm not sure if Reno's there. I'm gonna get the screens changed over just a second, please. There we go, thank you. Okay, thank you, um, Mr. Overfeld. First of all, let me say that uh, the state did apply, I mean, did uh, approve the first waiver that we applied for for January 17th, that has been approved. We're asking now for the second waiver for March 2nd. As you well know, that day there was a threat that was made at the real middle school. And even though we presented a lot of information through Facebook, through letters, students still decided to, or parents still decided that they wanted to keep their students home. The first screen that you see here is the actual six weeks difference if there was no waiver and if there was a waiver. In the second column, it tells you exactly what the attendance would be without a waiver. On the third column, it shows you with the waiver. 
And in this instance, we're going to do the whole district because we were below 10% for the entire district. So without a waiver, it would be 92.17 for the district. And with a waiver, it's 93.90, .90, which is a difference of 1.73. That's percentage points. And for, I'm sorry, was there, was there a question on this uh, slide? I'm sure, I'm sure there will be. Um, Ms. Lozano, you have a question already? Just uh, to ask Dr. Rios or if Dr. Garza, um, this, ex, this waiver request for this specific reason, I think you shared, and it might have been in the board update, that it's not been requested before that you are aware of? Correct. I'm not aware of ever requesting a waiver for safety. This would be the first time we make this type of request. I've been in communication with uh, other superintendents, uh, and they can't recall, at least in their school districts. This is something uh, unique. unique. But truly, in the attendance accounting handbook that you refer to here. It does say closures for bad weather or other issues of health or safety. Yes, so ma'am. leaves that window open. Yeah, we expect that it would be approved. Thank you. And the year to date, it also changed slightly. Uh, it also includes the waiver for the first uh, waiver that we requested, which is January 17th, and this one for March 2nd. And like I said earlier, it's for the entire district, so the difference would be 0. 0.15. Of course, for every other campus, you can see there, there is a difference. Mr. Chavita? Dr. Garza, how many waivers are you allowed a year? I. There is no limit, There's but no limit. I, I will make sure, Mrs. Smith, is there a limit? There is no limit. That is definitely not to imply or encourage anything. Of course. We don't want to ask for too many waivers. That's got to be a good reason anyway, because you just don't apply for it. It's got to be a good reason. Yes, sir. Dr. Rios. I, I want to make a comment, uh, and it's mainly for our public. The, we recognize that uh, some misguided students have made threats. I also want to point out that in my communication with 40 other superintendents throughout the state from, from the group I belong to, we all experienced similar threats. We all shared letters. Um, that, that we shared with our community, we shared videos, uh, that we messages that we try to send out. Uh, and we've also heard some remarks from individuals in, in, in the community. The, the reality is, is that our schools are as safe today as they were five and 10 years ago. The unfortunate thing is the misuse of social media but our schools are as safe today as they were five and 10 years ago. You know, do we have heightened security? Absolutely. But we have it because of a response to the changing times. I, I can never guarantee or be bold enough to lie to somebody and say, I guarantee the safety of your kids. I can, but I can guarantee you that we do more today than we have ever done. Uh, a lot more. Unfortunately, the misuse of social media has created this fear. Uh, I want to commend the local agencies who've uh, provided their assistance to Chief Maldonado and our security forces to make sure that our students are even more safe. Uh, but I, I certainly want to let parents know that, that we're as safe as we were and probably safer because we have so much more uh, security measures, whether it be security cameras, security personnel, or communication with other local agencies. It's just unfortunate that some misguided individuals take pleasure in creating fear uh, in, in others. 
the number of students absent, particularly sixth through eighth grade, was, was just uh, disheartening, uh, all because of social media. That was it, sir. Thank you. And I do hope that um, the district and its law enforcement does, to the fullest extent of what we're able to, um, punish those that are responsible for this because of their misguided ways and show that the district will not take any of this lightly or jokingly. Recommendation, sir? Yes, sir. Is the recommendation of the administration that the Board of Trustees approves the San Felipe del Rio CISD to apply for a district-wide low attendance waiver? For the recommendation, I so move. Is there a second? Ms. Haynes? Any other discussion? All in favor? Unanimous, thank you. Thank you, sir. Item 12, Technology and Operations. Administration is requesting we table item A, consideration of approved performance-based energy project with Schneider Electric in the amount not to exceed $18,129,539. Um, the request is to table it until next regular scheduled meeting. Yes, sir. We, um, we're in the process of negotiating a contract. We believe that we may have a contract in place by the end of this week. Uh, however, I, I would be reluctant to put it on the next Monday's board meeting. I'd rather we wait till next month. Okay. Um, so I saw a move to table item A until the next regular scheduled board meeting. Is there a second? Mr. Mesa, any other discussion? All in favor? Unanimous, thank you. 13, Business and Finance. Administration is requesting to table items A and B. A, consideration, discussion, possible approval of resolution approving the district's preliminary plan of finance pertaining to obligations to be designated as the San Felipe Del Rio Consolidated Independent School District Maintenance Tax Notes Series 2018 and authorizing other matters related thereto. And B, consideration to approve the commitment of fund balance and budget amendment to the general fund for energy savings project. And administration is asking those be tabled until the next available board or the next regular scheduled board meeting. Yes, sir. Okay. I so move that items 13A and B be tabled until the next regularly scheduled board meeting. Is there a second? Ms. Haynes, any other discussion? All in favor? Unanimous, thank you. Moving right along. 15, Student Services. A, consideration to approve the renewal of food service management company contract with Southwest Food Service Excellence, LLC. Dr. McNamara presenting. Good evening, President Overfelt, members of the board, and Dr. Rio. This evening, we are here to uh, consider the approval of the renewal of the Food Service Management Company contract with SFE, better known as Southwest Food Service Excellence. At your place, uh, I've uh, got you a copy of the uh, PowerPoint that we're going to present this evening. Assisting with the presentation this evening will be Mr. Pedalis, our general manager uh, of food services for SFE, Ms. Yanakani Valdez, our CFO, and also present in the audience today to answer any questions you might have are Mr. Javier Romero. He's our resident director of regional operations for SFE. We'd like to start the presentation this evening with a quick overview. During the 1918, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, 2018-2019 <laughs> school year, this will be the final uh, renewal year for RFP 1512, which was adopted and board approved on April 2015. Again, this is our last renewal year um, of that cycle. For the 2019-2020 school year, a request for proposal and contract with supporting documentation, the criteria for evaluation uh, will take place in December, and that has to be provided to TDA for approval January 2019. Uh, just to remind everybody, our food service program will continue with our CEP, which is the community eligibility provision for all elementary, middle school, and blended academy campuses. 
Uh, this is the program in which all our students have the, uh, have the opportunity to participate in breakfast and lunch program at no cost to them. Additionally, freshmen in high school will remain under the um, National School Lunch Program, <coughs> which they already have universal free breakfast. And um, of course, that goes along with an application process to determine their charge for either paid or reduced lunches. Um, we wanted to share with you the comparison of last year to this year, the 16-17 school year to 17-18, to show you that um, our current contract with SFE um, is showing an increase in the average daily participation for all areas, breakfast, lunch, and the a la carte across the board. Additionally, we were asked by one board member to uh, uh, separate that by campus. So we're proud to um, inform you this evening that a majority of our campus, including nine, have showed an increase in participation for their lunch program. And uh, we've sectioned them out there by campus. Additionally, uh, this was in the board communique, but uh, we wanted to again compare last year to this year for the Texas Department of Agriculture Equipment Assistance Grant. In 2016-2017, Irene Cardwell was awarded $35,737, followed by Blended at $28,633 for a total of $64,370. This year, we were elated when we got the results of the grant and uh, we increased significantly. Lamar was awarded 28,900, followed by an additional amount of 6,860. Dr. Femin Calderon, 28,900, and Garfield, 13,720, for a total of 78,380. This time I'm gonna turn the mic over uh, to Mr. Pedales. He's gonna share with you the training uh, program. Mr. Pedales. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight we want to mention and share with everybody that our SFP is committed to continue our training in quality assurance, safety, and professional standards. Throughout the year, we schedule out every month continual training with our staff to enhance proper food preparation, handling, and safety. Uh, as we've presented tonight, we have scheduled these events throughout the year and we continue going forward, and this also complies with our state mandate requirements each month throughout the year. We cover things like foodborne pathogen, um, path pathogens disease, reimbursable meals, uh, temperatures, proper heating and cooling temperatures, time as far as cooling temperatures and heating temperatures, uh, basic cooking procedures for different type of uh, scratch cooking, you know, um, made from scratch items, mashed potatoes, rice, things like that. We, we cover a whole broad amount of training with our staff so we can continue to serve a quality product for the children and make sure that everything is met according to standards. Um, the next slide. We also continue to have current events throughout the year. We start off with a back to school event uh, with this con uh, conducted with the health fair uh, we held that at the Civic Center in, back in August. Uh, we also do different events with grandparents and parents and, and so forth with breakfast items so we can increase participation, show the community what we have to offer for the children as, as far as their meals are concerned, so we can build that participation and, and just open up the, um, the awareness to what we have in, this, in the menus for breakfast and lunch of our, for the children. A lot of parents, I think they don't understand what we serve quality. And we continue to work on this on a daily basis to, to present that to, a, to the community so we, they can know what we're doing. Um, our lunch, our Thanksgiving this year, we saw an increase um, from the previous year based on just participation with the staff, with the schools, with the volunteers. We also brought in the culinary department from the high school to help out at one of the campuses during the, the lunch serving to help out and get them trained and knowledgeable about food preparation and <clears throat> serving the food to the children. So we're trying to incorporate all this with our own people too, as a staff. Uh, we're continuing to work on efforts to work with them through future events, like through summer feeding as well. Uh, we do all, all these throughout the month. We continue to have them throughout the year as we're expected to, to show our, um, our kids and our staff and the, and the community what we have to offer uh, in the food service department. Any questions? 
No, oh, here, I'm sorry. We're going to turn this over to Ms. Yana Connie Valdez. Good evening, President Alferfelt, Dr. Rios, board members. Um, as of our February data, we have uh, forecasted uh, the 1718 um, uh, deficit for the 1718 year. We initiated or approved an, uh, uh, the original budget for the food service program with a deficit of 29,713. Um, with the school closure back in January and not having a makeup day, the estimated loss uh, would be about 21,000, and we have had an increase in uh, in repair costs and increase in equipment repairs. We are currently estimating uh, a forecasted deficit of 60,713. However, we are monitoring it every month, um, but with the uh, school closure day and not having a makeup, I wanted to share that this could be uh, uh, an increase to the deficit that we had originally presented back in August of 2017. Any questions on the 17-18 forecast? Any questions? Yes, sir. Oh. Um, sorry. <laughs> sure. um, you know, I'm, I'm looking at the grant amount and then the deficit amount, and I'm thinking, well, you know, kind of balances off, but uh, there's, I, I'm so grateful that we have the quality assurance training, which is pertinent in every aspect. I mean, the monthly training that goes on, I've never seen before, uh, so it's excellent for our staff. Um, and this year has been somewhat of a, a difficult year in regard to, you know, the weather, the threats, and so <coughs> forth, so it's, it's kind of hard to gauge, but I am grateful for the grant amount that we receive for the various schools, and so that kind of balances a little bit the deficit. I would like to see an improvement, but I have seen um, the lunch and the meals go up in regard to that. Um, I think the way it's presented, it's I think it's more inviting for students to participate, whether it's breakfast or lunch. Um, the fact that they're involving personnel like grandparents and you know the health fair, mm -hmm. I think it's it's awesome. So I'm just glad that the program is <laughs> is presenting meals that are that are good for students and, and their participation is increased. So I would like to see the deficit kind of go down and. And I think my statements repeat the same thing I said the last time when we approved, but I'm overall satisfied with uh, the numbers going up in participation. Thank you, sir. Um, and, and it is a huge improvement. Our prior year, or our 15-16 deficit was with our first year when we had all the changes, when we uh, had a reduction in enrollment, we Personal. added staff for the transition, we uh, added positions, but, and we added temporary, we added extra duty, we did disposable trays, we added equipment. That first year, we had a deficit of 326,000. Um, so this year, again, starting with 29, a 29,000 deficit, and just you know, um, forecasting based on the school closure and not having a makeup day is where we're at 60,000, but again, we are monitoring it every month. I'm glad. So, but thank you for your comments, yes. Thank you. Ms. Lozano. I have a question, and it may not even be related, but under uh, our donations, we noticed that there were a couple of different uh, churches in the uh, community that donated bags of food, mm -hmm. one of them being to Garfield. Uh, and it looks like Garfield had a decrease of lunch participation, as did the middle school in San Felipe, as well as Chavira. What, I mean, I don't know what those no. bags are for. Has no. nothing to do with nothing? The, uh, nothing to so, do with nothing. Some of the local church organizations provide bags for kids to take home on weekends so they'll have something to eat. It's right, a, yeah, it's not which is tied to my question because if we are concerned of children not eating over the weekend, and if we've seen a decrease in lunch participation, are these kids going without during the week? That's kind of how I'm tying it together. Well, um, 
we'll, we'll look at those four campuses that, that uh, decreased and we'll ask uh, our food service personnel to study why they have decreased. I really don't know if it's just kids bringing lunches yes. uh, to school or, uh, or, or what it is, but we'll ask them to look at it uh, specifically. I'd be interested in yeah, that we'll, we'll provide a board update like within the next two weeks. And, and the repairs, um, what broke down? Uh, one of the Too campuses with the highest dollar in repairs right, or as year to date uh, is uh, Lonnie Green. That one's at, I think it, in total, we're at 44,000 in repairs. Um, and it's, I wanna say it's about eight of the campuses. Um, there's just been an increase. We, we are trying to, I say we, but luckily through SFE, I mean, through the grants, we're trying to catch up with that. We do have a lot of equipment that just is and in it's dire need. Like a maintenance plan. Yes. Yes. Schedule. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Okay. The proposed budget uh, for eighteen nineteen um, is at a positive, <laughs> is at a gain of twenty nine thousand five hundred and forty nine. One of the um, one of the areas that we in or that are in, is included in this budget is if we were uh, to become a district of innovation, the budget itself is proposed at less serving days, 171 days, and that is just part of you know making sure that our guarantee is in place for SFE to guarantee this, uh, this gain. But another positive is since we are a CEP district for our elementary, and middle school and blended academies, since the budget is presented at a gain, the district does not have to, ma does not have to make an allocation from general fund for the portion of the CEP. So the district at this point does not have a commitment for 18-19. In 17-18, when we approved uh, the budget, it included a $71,000 um, Commitment from general fund from the school districts from the school district. So that's something uh, very positive with our upcoming year uh, projecting a gain and not having a district commitment. As I mentioned, right now it's at seventy-one thousand. So that's something uh, really positive that we were really excited about with this uh, with the CEP program not having an additional commitment from the district financial commitment from the district. Um, we also the documents that you have included in your packet also include a 2.5% increase uh, for the administrative and management fees. This has been the increase uh, that has been, or this percentage has been the increase that has been presented in the prior years. The food service management companies, according to the Texas Department of Agriculture, are allowed to uh, do a, 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 up to a, a CPI increase of up to what the trend is uh, around where they're serving. So for Texas, it's at approximately 2.5%. Uh, the CPI and that information is also included in your packet. And as I mentioned in the past two years, that has been uh, the increase in the administrative fee. The um, terms of the guarantee to have a um, gain of 29,000 for SFE to guarantee is based on, as I mentioned, 171 days. Um, it is based on an enrollment of 10,500, which, which our district has. And it is based on uh, maintaining a salary budget of uh, 2.4 million. We are currently at 2.2, uh, which uh, between 2.2 and 2.4 would be an 8% change. And that's between salary and benefits. So again, those are the three areas where if we, uh, if we went below 171 days, SFE wouldn't guarantee the 29,000 gain. But again, that's part of the contract, or that's a, uh, part of uh, the contract uh, to be submitted, those items. And then uh, the deadline to renew is April 30th. Uh, we're bringing it to the board in March so that if uh, there is a request uh, for additional information or more research before the board would like to approve, we do have an opportunity to bring it back at the April meeting. On our staffing assignments, the budget includes uh, 98 positions, and for 1718, we had 98 positions. We discussed the, a transition plan, which we're still uh, in progress through attrition. 
where we're transitioning from food service cooks to workers, so through the attrition process, as those uh, positions are either vacated or uh, promoted or an employee um, um, leaves our district, we fill it with a uh, worker position. So as you can see, we still have 12 positions, uh, uh, 12 positions opportunity. So we're still carrying about a $30,000 um, overage, which once we reach that attrition would obviously be a savings for our district. And we are planning on 98 employees. And uh, it does include a, an assistant manager for um, for Ruben Chavira Elementary to support the STEM magnet at Laughlin. So we do, we, we within the 98 employees that we approved last year, we're requesting 98 employees for next year. Same number, we just shifted uh, where we have a need for um, a manager to support uh, Ruben Chavira, uh, I'm sorry, an assistant manager to support Ruben Chavira for the Laughlin magnet since that is where we will be um, providing this uh, food from, what do we, uh, satelliting our food from. At this time, if there's any questions. Any other questions <clears throat> regarding the renewal of the contract? Recommendation, please. It is the recommendation of the administration that the Board of Trustees approve the renewal of the Food Service Management Company contract with Southwest Food Service Excellence, LLC. Heard the recommendation. My so move. Is there a second? Ms. Haynes. Any other discussion? <clears throat> All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. That brings us to 16 closed session. <clears throat> if during the course of any duly posted meeting, the Board of Trustees determines that a closed or executive session is required regarding in, an item posted on the agenda, that session will be held on any and all subjects and purposes permitted by sections 551.071, 072, 073, 074, 076, 082, 084, and 087 of the Government Code, Texas Open Meeting Act. If a final vote excuse me, is required on any matter considered in the closed or, in, or executive session, it shall be taken either upon the reconvening of the public session covered by this notice or a subsequent duly posted public meeting as the board shall determine. Tonight, pursuant to 551.074, discussion of personnel or hear complaints against personnel and .071, private consultation with the board's attorney, Discussion of the personnel report to include the following new hires, district vacancies, retirements, resignations, and reassignments. And discussion of salary adjustments to include but not limited to the following justifications. Service credit, salary matrix adjustments. Three, discussion of teacher and retiree contracts. B, pursuant to 551.071, private consultation with the board's attorney. One, discussion to direct the superintendent and legal counsel to issue notice to terminate the TASB Benefits Pool Group Benefit Services Agreement, and two, discussion to engage Brown & Brown Lone Star Insurance Services Incorporated as consultant for medical and volunteer employee insurance. All votes will be taken in open session. It is now 8.16 p.m. and we are in closed session. It's 9.13 p.m. On March 19th, 2018, this board will reconvene into open session. No action was taken. <clears throat> A, consideration to approve the personnel report to include the following new hires, district vacancies, retirements, and resignations. Ms. Garcia. Yes, sir. It is a recommendation of the administration that the Board of Trustees approve the following new hires. Monica Rivera, counselor for Garfield Elementary. Luan Viesca, Master Reading Teacher for Dario High School. Maria Gleason, Special Education Teacher for SGLC. Laura Sandate, Curriculum Coordinator for Secondary. Erica Varela, Curriculum Coordinator for Instructional Technology. And Karen Schaefer, Coordinator for Staff Development and Advanced Academics. <coughs> Thank you, we've heard the recommendation. Is there a motion to accept? Ms. Martinez Lozano, seconded by Mr. Mesa. All in favor? Unanimous, thank you. <clears throat> no salary matrix or service credit adjustments? Correct. 
C, consideration to approve teacher and retiree contracts. Ms. Garcia. Yes, sir. It is a recommendation of the administration that the Board of Trustees approve the teacher and retiree contracts as discussed in close section. For the recommendation, I so move. Is there a second? Ms. Haynes, all in favor? Unanimous, thank you. <clears throat> I'm going to skip down to item E, consideration to approve administration to engage Brown and Brown Lone Star Service Insurance Services Incorporated as consultant for medical and volunteer employee insurance under the terms and conditions discussed in closed session. Dr. Rios, or do you want me to, on that recommendation? Uh, I can read it. It's, it's up to you. Go ahead. <coughs> so do you do President Overfelt, members of the board, it is the recommendation of the administration that you approve the superintendent to engage Brown and Brown Lone Star Insurance Service Incorporated as consultants for medical and volunteer employee insurances under the terms and conditions discussed in closed session, and that you approve the superintendent to sign a contract. For the recommendation, is there a motion to accept? Also move. Mr. Chavita, first, seconded by Ms. Lozano. Any other discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Five in favor and one opposed. Passes, thank you. D, consideration to approve and direct superintendent and legal counsel to issue notice to terminate TASB benefits services agreement as discussed in closed session. It's the recommendation <coughs> of the board president to um, direct the superintendent and legal counsel to issue notice to terminate the TASB benefits services agreement as discussed in closed session. And is there a motion? Mr. Chavita, seconded by Ms. Martinez Sosano. All in favor? Opposed? Five in favor, one opposed. Passes. Thank you. Takes us to 18 superintendent's report. One special called meeting for March 26 for approval of the District of Innovation Plan. Dr. Rios? <coughs> yes, Mr. Board President, members of the board. Tomorrow we will meet with the District of Innovation Committee where they will uh, review the draft plan and make uh, final adjustments. And then it is our intention to present it to the board for approval at the meeting indicated. Of, on March 26. And the meeting tomorrow, is that also public? Um, they will take public comments at that time? Yes, sir, it's I'd, posted. Okay, I'd like uh, tomorrow if, if administration and, and social media side of it could send a blast on social media to remind everybody to come and um, voice their opinion or hear what's going to happen so as to dispel rumors before it comes to us next Monday. Um, and then you had one other item you wanted to mention. Yes, sir. Just as a correction, I'm going to ask uh, either uh, Chief Maldonado or Jorge to come for the podium. When we went up there, they mentioned that two years ago we did file a waiver for a security reason, uh, and it was approved. I really have, I, I don't remember, but if, if they can uh, just correct me, I, I'd appreciate it. Yes, sir. Um, I believe it was two years ago, December 15th and 16th. It was more or less like what we had uh, this time around. There was something, some, post, some posting, and then it took off. Mm -hmm. So there was some um, social media, and then all of a sudden there was a lot of fear. We did ask for a waiver at that particular time for those two days. And it was granted? It was granted, yes, sir. I'll, we'll have them research it, and I'll include the, the waiver, the date, and the circumstances of the board update. I apologize. I just really don't remember uh, from two years ago, but uh, they mentioned it to me, so I wanted to correct myself and offer to provide a report on the board update as soon as they share that information with me. Appreciate that. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Thank you. Being no further business before this board, is there a motion to adjourn? Mr. Mesa, seconded by Mr. Chavita. All in favor? Unanimous, this board is adjourned at 9.19 p.m. Thank you.